Building aerodynamic performance into these current Formula 1 cars is largely a case of subtle changes to key areas. In this video I'm going to go through 5 changes to this Formula 1 car model to suggest how and why these parts are important. The highlight being the changes to the diffuser that increased the floor's performance by 40%. Two front wings were used, this being the fourth attempt at a front wing. And finally I'm getting an idea as to how and why they work. You can see in these animations that the central loading of the wing is the most important in creating a significant amount of upwash. Now, because I have a loaded and unloaded outboard section, we can see there is more rotation of the flow about the x-axis comparing the two. A note is that the unloaded wing actually produces less downforce, so there are still issues with this model. Then again, the wheel is blocking. But now a year and a bit into these regulations, most have unloaded outboard sections, suggesting there is a preference for counter-rotating the left side looking forward. Though Aston and others have loaded the outer section, inboard a bit, and just on the inner edge of the front wheel. Commenting on the Red Bull, they are working the inboard part of the wing, judging by its height. But they are also ending it early, making the air more likely to wrap up underneath the air coming off the rest of the outer part of the wing. Generally across the field there isn't a large amount of difference with these solutions, it's a difficult area of the car. It suggests going by the centerline plot underneath the car, there is higher pressure under the nose of the chassis, which is contrary to the expectations of if you work the centerline more, it will decrease the performance of the outer part of the centerline behind it. I suggest we have seen something similar in the past with the pre-2009 regulations, where the center of the wing was allowed to run lower and was therefore more loaded, as such in-washing end plates was the characteristic solution. The suspension on these cars are particularly important for countering the front wing upwash. I haven't attempted to resolve the first guess, and it has all the separation. However, in this case I modified the trailing leg on the bottom wishbone at the interface to the chassis and the, and the wishbone geometry. It's an important area of the car where it will affect the interface between the chassis and floor. It will in turn set the condition of the flow around the bottom of the side pods. It's kind of a basic characteristic of these cars, and at the early stage of these regulation set, it is an important area to get right. It will diminish in priority as these cars develop and solutions converge. Looking at the streak lines on the chassis, before and after the change to the suspension interface, clear signs of detachment have been removed. You can see the difference in the centerline plot here, it increases in pressure under the chassis and before the floor. It may increase the gradient of the floor entrance, producing more downforce, but the diffuser was also altered on this model in a way that made the whole floor work better. So is the suspension change also represented here? I don't know from this level of analysis, but I'm going to assume that it's better. While we're in this area, and before the suspension mod, I added a large outer fence. It is difficult to align the surface's direction to the flow because of the limited regulation box. The result was just a bit of a mess between the outer two floor fences and the shedded flow structure was a little bit more outboard of the floor edge so the modified floor edge wasn't coupled. So in general it was a bit of a mess in this case so therefore it's in the bin with this model. The other floor edge treatment at the end of the floor fences seems to lower the pressure of the floor just around this region. I wasn't being systematic and thorough with this mod, and at the same time I changed the diffuser which gave big gains, and I can't separate the two. Now speaking to the diffuser modification. The floor tunnel hasn't changed, but the central section expands less dramatically. The, the plot shows the expansion on the old model affects the floor immediately before the diffuser. The thing with these floors is that they have a flow structure running their length. Maintaining these vortices is hugely important because having them collapse means the same thing as flow detaching off an airfoil. The lift will just disappear. Basically, the reasoning for the porpoising and bouncing we saw last year, and also my uninformed idea as to why the Red Bulls are quick, is because of the maintenance of these structures. Then just before the diffuser, the mid-floor section cuts are larger and far more effective. Just this diffuser in the cutout is worth 20%. 
with an obvious difference in the centerline plot and coefficient and pressure map. You can also see the changes in the animation. The other half of the gain was through the addition of a keel in the diffuser. 20% more just for this. Again, illustrating it's the maintenance of the vortex structure adding performance.